How's your cloud world going? Good so far? Hope so. Thanks for coming to our panel about the sentient enterprise or sentient HR in a cloud-connected hybrid workplace. I hope I got it together. I have to ask one of the panelists how they came up with this name. But with that, with no further ado, I want to ask my other analyst panelists to come on stage, please. Join me. Round of introductions starting on my far left, your far right. Sri, quickly, something about yourself. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sri Kumar Sridharan. I head the Oracle Services globally for Infosys. It's been a wonderful um, couple of days here. And um, I live out of Bangalore, traveled uh, here for this event. And uh, we'll have a good and fruitful discussion, I hope and uh, you all can benefit from our experience and our learnings. Thanks for being here, Sri. So I'll ask you after the introductions, how did you come up with the name of this panel? So we can think about that question. <laughs> so next to Chris is Chris. Um, Sri is Chris, former colleague, went to the dark side. She's wearing black for this. She went as an analyst to be a vendor. Tell us a little That's about right. yourself. That's right, I did, I did change over. Uh, my name is Chris Avrilla. I am with Oracle. I've been with Oracle about six months as their head of product strategy around talent. And neben Chris sits Markus Hack from Juniper Networks, so a fellow German, so we could speak German. You will be done with this panel in 10 minutes, but tell us something about yourself, Markus. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, Markus Hack, I work for Juniper Networks. We are a Bay Area company with operations in 50 countries. I'm heading the HR IT for Juniper Networks, and we implemented Oracle one and a half years ago. Um, and we use almost a full suite, uh, core recruiting, benefits, case management, talent, compensation. So. Perfect. And Markus wins the prize for the best panelist sneakers on stage. <laughs> Next to him is uh, Sri. Sri, Sri, sorry. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. It's uh, very exciting to be here. I work for McDermott International. Uh, we make oil and gas infrastructure for both offshore and onshore. Uh, I support corporate functions for McDermott that includes finance, HR, which is a big passion of mine, uh, legal, communication, sustainability, and so on. Great. And uh, Sri is a repeat offender. He survived one of my panels, but it's a few years back. We know it was this millennium, but he's still fine. So, <laughs> Sri, why the name of so many buzzwords, sentient HR and a cloud-connected hybrid workplace? Even me as an analyst, I have to look at my cheat sheet. How do you come up <laughs> with that title? Yeah. So sentient is nothing but it should be intuitive, emotional, rather than just being a process center. So today, um, you know, more than the um, normal processes which we do, there is a lot of uh, emotional quotient involved in the way, especially in HR. And um, HR should be more sentient, uh, and that's the whole purpose. It can't be an automated, you know, uh, it, we feel that it should be a human-centric approach. And uh, that is why the name of Sentient. Yep. And especially in this remote working after the pandemic, people are all across the globe. They don't see each uh, eye to eye. And that is where the Sentient uh, you know, factor comes in play. Yep. So that's, that's how we... So Sentient from Sentire in Italian, if it's Italian, must be Latin, right? So the listening <laughs> enterprise is more important than ever for I think it's English. English. <laughs> yep. What have you put in the product, Chris, to make Oracle HCM to listen? Absolutely. I, you know, I think it's super important uh, as we look at product strategy, um, how we do make this more human. You know, people are not a commodity. I think we've treated people like a commodity for a long time. We've used things like talent acquisition to solve all the problems in an organization. So what can we actually do to, to kind of help HR, help managers, help workers themselves um, really kind of focus on experience and not about how do we kind of get more juice out of the onion, mm -hmm. but how do we help people you know, work better? How do we make them better at work? So we launched recently uh, Oracle Me, which is a platform really at the, at the very core is about knowing me, seeing me, helping me, uh, communicating with me. And that's really the, at the bottom line. Like one example is you know, how do we change this dynamic of a worker-manager relationship? you know, when that is probably the most core thing in somebody's experience. And how do we root one question and actually change 
the whole way a manager and an employee work together and make it more bi-directional and make it focused on how they're doing, right? And that could be things at home, it could be things at work, it could be all kinds of things. But as a manager, your one job should be to help unlock the performance and potential of this person. And it should be rooted in what's in your way and how can we help get you to those outcomes, not tell you the six steps to do it. Note that it took Chris almost one minute to put Oracle Me, right? So <laughs> sure. have you heard about Oracle Me, Marcus? Have you taken a look? Uh, yeah, we are looking what is to implement take? some parts of it. Some parts of it? Um, there are, of course, like always some challenges and transformation is super important. Right. So we need to look what we have right now and how do we get to using the full power. And you just went live, you said. What are you live with, with Oracle now? Uh, we went live mid-pandemic. Yeah. And this was already a mind shift. Uh, we started our project before the pandemic and we did everything the traditional way. And then during the pandemic, everybody moved remote. It was a huge mind shift. What's the footprint? What are you using? What are you using these days from Oracle? What's the footprint? Uh, almost everything. So almost we everything. have licensed um, almost everything. We okay. implemented core um, recruiting, onboarding, talent, compensation, yep. case management, time. Yep. So we have you looked at uh, uh, Oracle Me and what's your footprint? No, we haven't gotten to Me yet. Okay. Uh, we, very similar to, to Marcus here, we began the journey in 2018. Um, uh, to go with HCM, and then in the middle of that, ours is an interesting story because we went through a merger and then immediately went bankrupt mm. after the merger. So 2020 is when- It wasn't a good merger, huh? It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right in the middle of HCM, we were going through bankruptcy, COVID-19 hit yes. at the same time, and then the oil and gas recession. Mm. Talk, so, talk about making it easy to implement something. I know, right? so, I but, know. But neither so, Marcus nor, right. nor Shree have gray hair, and I have yeah. gray hair. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So, it's time to be sentient. <laughs> exactly, very sentient. Yeah. But what's the footprint? What are you live on right uh, now? So, so we've got uh, quite pretty much the entire suite. Okay. Um, the co-HCM benefits, mm -hmm. um, except for payroll. Okay. Yeah, we recently implemented recruiting as well. Good. So we're live with, uh, with a pretty large footprint. There. Yeah. So let's talk about what we mentioned already, the pandemic, right? Uh, three, the pandemic, what has it done for service industries? How, how did Infosys deal during the pandemic? Yeah. Share a little so, bit. All of us know that, you know, the last two years have been completely different in terms of how the business has changed, uh, including the mindset of behavior, interpersonal relationships, everything. And um, what we have done a few things um, from an Infosys perspective, which is applicable to any service industry for that matter. Uh, if you look at um, even do, before the pandemic, the digital transformation initiatives have been accelerated, right? And now, during the pandemic, what happened? There has been enormous demand for the digitally skilled talent. Now, with COVID being hit, it was important for us to have a remote access to the people and to do a remote upskilling and cross-skilling. So we have a platform called Lex wherein around 200,000 content has been curated, both from Infosys as well as from the external content, and our employees have been given access yep. to actually upskill. So they could chart their own career into it. We also introduced something called digital quotient and tagging so that it also depends on, you know, if you get certified and digitally skilled, then your compensation also will get impacted. Yep. So a couple of things we did to increase the digital quotient of the people, which was extremely well. Naturally, the, um, you know, she talked about Oracle Me. We had something called Infu Me mm -hmm. app, mm -hmm. which was um, because for an, if our employees have to decide the future of the clients, they have to experience that themselves. So we created this Infu Me where all the activities could be done digitally. And our app, even as a manager, I can actually approve on the go. So it's a mobile enabled uh, app. So that actually helped them realize the value of the digitization. In, in fact, digitizing their own lives, work lives. Right. So that is something which you did. Naturally, the other, everybody faced the same remote working, um, hybrid working even after COVID, we are looking at a hybrid uh, workforce, um, maybe <coughs> across the country and globe. We have 25 to 30% coming to office and rest of them. So what we also did is, uh, like Sri was mentioning about the COVID. In fact, we did a lot of implementations remotely, and that actually proved that, you know, to the clients as well as to everyone that this can be done remotely. 
And even for you know, Shri's project, we did the entire thing remotely, not even a person at on site. So these are things which actually, and we baked in these into our methodologies and HR policies. Right. Uh, so that is how you know some of the things which we really manage. And naturally, very important is the employee well-being and you know care. Um, we had something called Hail, uh, one of our application, which was remote. And during the pandemic, it came very handy. And uh, they could access all the, um, you know, talks, even counseling sessions. We rolled out the COVID vaccinations uh, to almost 100,000 people remotely across all locations. And that is something which really helped. So I would say these are three or four things which we did to kind of uh, help the employees as well as enable them to be uh, future ready for the digital skills. Very good. Interesting. Like the whole thing, mobile application in FIMI, if I remember it right, right, obviously. Marco said, um, Juniper, what were the lessons learned? What can you share while dealing with the pandemic? Yeah, um, we had kind of the advantage that we went live during COVID. So we were halfway done with the implementation. Yep. And then COVID started, nobody really know what to do. Um, but what we try to do is anticipate what the life would look after COVID and try to consider this during the implementation and not redo everything when we are done. And one very specific item um, that I want to highlight is recruiting. Okay. Um, before we were not really remote ready, we have beautiful office in Sunnyvale, everybody yeah. came to the office. But then with recruiting we thought, if we work remote, what are the advantages? Before we just could hire in the Bay Area, what is a very limited pool of resources. Right. And that means that if people work remote, it doesn't matter where they are. And then we extended it from the US to Canada. I personally live in Canada, so it was a big yeah. advantage also for myself. So now if we hire, our resource pool is so much bigger. We can hire across all of North America. Right. And this from an implementation perspective meant a lot of changes in the process. Mm -hmm. Also, when you think about um, LinkedIn integrations, you want to post your jobs on LinkedIn. There's, you need to change this approach totally if before you just post Sunnyvale, but now you need to be able to make job postings accessible globally. Um, but we were able to, uh, to do all those changes <laughs> during the implementation itself. So a great point, talent pools got time zone or yeah. workable time, working hours, right? Where you can win Europe and work for a US company if you want to work at night, right? So, yeah. uh, Shri, like live lessons learned at McDermott during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it was very interesting because we had these two massive projects going on at the same mm -hmm. time, Global HCM rollout and the uh, Chapter 11 project. 100% mm -hmm. was done remote. 100% um, of the programs run remote. Yeah. Um, uh, it was unprecedented and highly successful, right? right? Uh, we went through significant attrition during that time because we were, we were going filing Chapter 11. And so with being remote, the advantage is you could hire anywhere around the world. Right. So we replenished our workforce globally. Yeah. So we hired people. It was a borderless hiring environment. So we were hiring people from, from India and from... Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the U.S., people work from home. Same thing, lot of talent pools. Same thing. Yeah. But I think, I think like uh, Shri brought up, the, the whole well-being of the employee is a huge yeah. aspect that we're focusing okay. on now. Very important, yeah. um, It's just the work balance. You know, people are, people are fed up of being right. at home. And uh, we're trying to make sure they come into the office at least for a day or two. Yeah. You know, and we try to do some activities for them there. Very good. And that's kind of worked out. Yep. Worked out pretty well, but I mean, hybrid's here to stay. What? And uh, you know, most of the folks, 80% of the folks, uh, even if they have a designated time to come to work, they don't. What? They come only when they need to be there. When there's value of people. It's really there. a reality, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. Very interesting, so Chris, as a product vendor perspective, right? Uh, there are some people who are saying that COVID has more done for digitalization than 10 years of chief digital officer work. Right. So <laughs> not sure what you're seeing. So what, what do you see at Oracle and what have you put in the product as a reaction to help enterprises to be successful? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, at the end of the day, technology, data, all of these things, you know, kind of going back is just making things easier for people, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's, so it's fascinating over probably 20, 25 years, right? You know, even as a researcher, um, as somebody who was doing the work prior to that, you know, with all the technology, with all the data, productivity has stayed pretty stagnant, if not gone down. Yep. We saw a huge rise in productivity after the pandemic, right? And then it started to wane again. And the only thing that was different 
is people being empowered to get their work done. People being empowered to do the how, right? You know, we had to fundamentally shift from a kind of a command and control world that we would live in. Here is your process map, input process output, right? Yep. And, and it really what we saw was people weren't always following those processes anyway because every time new systems were put in or things changed, people didn't really change what they were doing, they just kind of added this stuff in. Yep. When the pandemic happened and people were kind of sent home, all that kind of went out the window. And even when people would complain about the work, right, they often didn't change even when new technology came in because they still knew if they zigged and zagged, they could get what they needed to get done. Now all of a sudden you had you know, people at home and everybody was competing for Wi-Fi and everything else, but you were still tasked to get the job done. So it was more about what you had to achieve, why you had to achieve it, and you were connected to the work. So even when I was at Deloitte, we studied the notion of well-being, and what we saw was all the perks, all the benefits, all the things, right, were making a small impact on employee experience, but they weren't helping unlock people's performance and potential, and one of their biggest stressors was work. Yep. So if we made work better for people and people better at work, then you know, this notion of well-being would not only unlock their performance and potential, but that would do it for the organization. So it's a little bit of a long answer to you know, how we view technology. And we have to do that right when we're, when we're creating products and when we advocate for you as product strategists. How can we arm you with data and tools that will help empower workers to get outcomes? But it will take a mindset shift you know, it isn't all about data and technology. We can kind of inspire with the technology different behaviors and rituals, but if we try to keep pulling people back into the office and they don't know why and it's not helping them or they don't have that agency anymore to do the how, yep. like it's just a different model. It's more of a kind of a commitment and collaboration model. And it's kind of a high empathy, high accountability model. But if we allow people to do the how, Right. right? They'll determine if they need to be back in the office or not. I don't think one size fits all. We talk a lot of stats. But, but will we leave it to the people if they want to come or not, right? That's an interesting question. Absolutely. Like five, six years ago, there was a big trend of forcing kind of like people to come back at the office. Marissa Maya started at Yahoo. It was kind of like a hidden reduction in force. If you don't move to the office, they have no place for you. IBM followed. I would ask CHOs and say, Think about, and sorry, I didn't foresee the yeah. pandemic, right? I said, there's a big earthquake in California. I live in California, right? And, and naturally, nobody got killed, but the buildings are damaged. It's going to take government months to figure out which ones have to retrofit it if they're safe to go in. Everybody has to work from home. I asked CHOs, what productivity hit would your enterprise take? Right. Everybody was in 40% and more. There was one gentleman, I won't yeah. name him, said, Mm, about 20%, and all the others here, you're crazy, impossible, yeah. right? And now we know from a GDP part, I know there's industry to some slowing. I mean, productivity has been up, yeah. right? Who would have thought about this? Yeah. So the question to me is, if I would go to the McDermott headquarter tomorrow, yeah. how many people will be there? At what capacity would you see? Just a quick round. I think it's just 10% of the folks. 10%? Now, now, even, I mean, if you look top down, bottoms yeah. up, even your executives right. are working from home, yeah. right? Yeah. They come into the office when they need right. to be there. Most of them are on conference calls because calls begin really early. Right. Right. And then 10%, quick, 10%. quick round. If you Super. go tomorrow, a lot more because a lot of people go on Thursdays. Thursdays are our office day. So probably like 20, 30%. 20, 30%? Chris, if I go to Austin or Redwood Trails? I, I would say single digits. Single, single digits? Single digits, single yeah. digits? Percentage. So we have been in Bangalore in August. I know yeah. some real numbers, careful. So <laughs> <laughs> we, um, see I would, Different view of that. It's yeah. not that um, you know we are also trying to have some 25 percent at any time. Today we are just around 10 to 12 percent. Mm -hmm. But from an um, you know teamwork because we all work as a team. There's not too much of individual contributions while it's happening. But there's a lot of team um, you know dynamics in a project work which you do for any client. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to come at least a couple of days. So they can choose the time and date. But we would expect the team to come together at some point of time and then not all five days, but at right. least. So th that's the kind of direction we have. But if you ask me a question today, we maybe around 10 to 12% workforce is in office, but we would like to have that at around 25%. Right. But it sounds like you're at least giving them agency to, to do yep. that, yes. right? Well, you know, and I do think that that's 
what's critical what? is is how do we actually give them that and i think you know again what what a, how is the technology helping people do that exactly to foster those connections to get what they need to get and and help managers performance manage around outcomes what? versus tasks and but, but it's tricky right so apple was super proud three years ago they would start their artificial intelligence drive which they're a little bit behind and they got the top Google guy to do their AI. And when uh, Tim Cook forced people to come back at the office on Tuesday, Thursday, he quit. And yeah. to add infamy to problems, he went back to Google. <laughs> so, <right. laughs> so from your perspective, as a transformation partner for enterprises, right? The, the two big E's, what have you done for employee experience and for employee engagement, which both are critical, and what has changed during the pandemic? What have you seen? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I, I can talk from an Oracle implementation perspective when we did yep. for the um, clients. Yep. So a couple of things we did while Oracle has all the features and you know things which help an organization do it. There are many things which we created to help uh, increase the or have a better digital experience for the employees. Um, for example, you know how do you actually um, do an onboarding uh, remotely mm -hmm. uh, right from there first steps to the probation part. So we built an onboarding concierge, which helped them you know, increase the output of the people. Second is smart hiring, because everybody was hiring remotely during this period, right? There was no way you could do even a face-to-face -face interviews. Right. So how do you actually automate the entire process and uh, do one of our high-tech clients actually, because, uh, they, because of the solution, they improved their time to hire by around 25%. Yeah. So there are a lot of things which we did, and we brought all these things under a common platform called uh, MyHR Enterprise, which we call, where uh, you know the employees can have a very digital, intuitive, mobile-enabled experience. Mm -hmm. Whatever be the system of records, the system of engagement is the same. It's a unified employee experience that actually improved the productivity. So we call that MyHR Enterprise, and that's something which we created and then, you know, during the pandemic, and that's been very helpful for uh, all our clients, including our internal employees. Um, so that's something which um, we, you know, did extremely well, and there's something which uh, we are now uh, rolling it out to our clients. Very good. Excellent. Markus, from Juniper's perspective, like, what have you done to for the engagement thing, which to me is always ephemeral, right? I remember a time when it was called motivate your people. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what have you done on the engagement and employee experience side? Yeah, and it's not so much about the employee experience, it's more about the HR team's experience. Um, one challenge that we face, and I think a lot of, of you would change, um, have the same challenges. Um, with remote work, employees starting to move around. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to know where the employees are. There are some legal reasons. There's also some um, pay reasons, uh, different, different pay zones. So first of the first is a thing that we need to know where the employees are. And the second thing is we need to enable managers to have those conversations with the employees and say, if you move somewhere else and this is a different location, a different kind of salary class, we probably need to adjust your salary up or down and how to put this into the annual salary discussions. And all of this enabled as a manager self-service that managers can have these discussions. And managers can <coughs> go back to HR, and HR need to support them. And this would put a lot of work and pressure on HR. It's very interesting. I think manager, manager empowerment, people lead empowerment, yeah. is crucial to help companies to move faster and become more agile. But uh, Sri, from your perspective. Yeah, so what we've done, um, Holger, is we are, because we are so uh, spread out in the world, uh, we are in 58 countries. Uh, we've started a program called uh, Engage to Inspire for mm -hmm. employees, right? So every month we bring the employees together, uh, go through either some kind of training session. Uh, along with that, we do some kind of games and get to know of the employees and so on. Because it's hard to keep the culture of the company with people spread out when you're not connected, yep. right? So we make it a point every month to go through this um, E2I is what we call it. And it's a, it's a program, right? Yep. So every month we have a session, we invite people, we, we let the audience introduce themselves, they create a slide and talk about themselves okay. and so on. A lot of listening, a, a lot of, lot lot of and, and, okay. and this is something we never did in the, in the non-hybrid environment, right. you know? 
Very interesting. It, it's working out really well for us. Good, good example for listening exercise. Yeah. It was very important, right? Hearing versus listening, tons of keynotes and that. So Chris, I'm gonna make you take your Oracle hat off. Okay. Put your analyst hat back on, which you had till recently. Absolutely. What has Oracle not built in Oracle HCM for engagement and experience that you personally, off the record, there's nobody listening here, right. would like to see being built? You know, I think, I think the core is, is there. Most, you know, I've yeah. seen a lot of different tech companies uh, come into the space. Um, you know, when, when we were looking at it, you know, when I had my analyst hat on, um, experience kind of seemed to come from two, two pretty different directions. One were kind of systems of work, and some were more like systems of community and collaboration. And the ones that were systems of work were trying to go towards community and collaboration. The ones that were community and collaboration kind of trying to go more towards systems of work. But, you know, I think what I've, I would like to see, um, in, even in our own products, is how do we understand what managers are doing with their employees that are, are working, right? That works, that, that actually is trying to, you know, we're putting nudges out and we put recommendations out, but what's actually working? What's moving the needle? So I would love to see that. Okay. Um, and you will see that in our roadmap. That's the one thing that I saw missing because I do think the basic things, like right now, the ability to hyper-personalize is there. Right. Um, and, and how do you scale employee experience when you're trying to hyper-personalize? Is, is leveraging that data and technology, but it still comes down to how do we develop our workers? Um, how do we promote um, not just worker progression, but worker agility, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think development and, and not just content and learning and training, but you know, giving people projects so, to So am I on. hearing everything is there? Yeah. Nothing can be built? All right, let me turn it around. Let's oh, ask Marcus I know. And, I, I, and I can. Marcus and Shreve, they have an idea. If they have right. something wish list, Christmas is coming, right? So right. Marcus Shreve. I what, gave what? you my Christmas. Yeah, 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 good. <laughs> yeah, I have a comment about this. Um, it's very difficult to talk about employee experience. A lot of people say employee experience, but if you ask five people, and if I ask five people, you get five different answers what they understand under the employee experience. Right. Six answers because we think it. And, yeah. yes. Yes. and some of the answers I got is, what is, a, what is a great employee experience? And one person told me, oh, if I enter my bank information and I don't get an error, that's a great employee experience. And yeah. I said, that has nothing to do with employee. This is like the basic minimum that a system should do, not give you errors. So it's important for us and I think for everyone to if your CHRO says, oh, let's do great employee experience to go down, what does it mean? What is great employee experience? My processes, they work. If my managers don't get errors and they can do self-service, is this employee experience? I don't think so. I think that's, again, basic. Where do we get to this next level to really provide employee experience? And you still have to hyper-personalize, right? Because yeah. everybody, what they need in that moment, yeah. right? Personalization is super important. It's personalization, so right? Yeah. So I do think you do have to start to create worker-centric tech, yeah. right? I think we have to kind of go beyond HR and HR systems, right? But how do we make it easy for somebody to understand what their leave is or to, you know, they get married and all the things that have to, right. to happen? You know, what is there to help us, you know, navigate through that um, if I am looking for another job, whatever it is. But let's be sent into the about customer. Let's, let's see what McDermott would like you guys to build. I want to know that. <laughs> well, I mean, so much has changed in the work environment, yeah. right? See, previously, your employee came and, and would need ask for flex time. I'd, have, I'd like to go to the doctor. Give me something tangible, sweetie. You know, but Give them something tangible. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, see, in to, today's world, I mean, you're hybrid. You're living in a high, totally hybrid world. Your work window, which was eight to five, is now from six to twelve. Not if you're in France, right? but that's a different story, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I think I, I don't know what can be done. I mean, it, it's just how you manage people in that in that different environment. You have to really be a lot more compassionate. You're a lot more flexible in that environment. But I think the whole cloud concept helps with hybrid in a yeah. huge way. I mean, just the transition for us from bankruptcy and all of that stuff and attrition and all that, 
I think it was cloud that kind of saved us through all of this. That's a very important point. The big winner from a technology side is the cloud from the pandemic, because all of a sudden, boards which never understood because of the technologies, what does the cloud do, data center, capex, and so on, all of a sudden they're looking at offices as capex dumps because they're not using it, right? So the sensibility to change capex into opex has massively increased. And with the cloud only using, paying for what you use is, is a key step from that. But three, from a service provider, from a, from a transformation partner perspective, right? You see hundreds of Oracle implementations. What would you put on the Christmas list for engagement experience what would you like yeah. to see from Oracle? So one, uh, I completely agree with the personalization part, right? Yeah. Today you are remote, um, most of the people are working. How do you access, even for a query, you know, you come to the, you know, how do you get re the solution faster? So the super personalization is a very important factor. And today, um, from a technology perspective, if you look at the employer or the company must be using multiple systems of records. Mm -hmm. But then how do you actually get a unified view for an employee, for me, when I log in, I need to see the entire data, right? Even from applying a leave to kind of looking at, uh, you know, what are the insurance amount, everything. And that is something which I call the super personalization. And that will enable, uh, you know, the employee to feel empowered. The information is at the fingertip. And they'll also improve the productivity and also retain the employee. Because a lot of times you get frustrated working remote, you don't know what is, you know, a lot of policies are not there. So if, if you can get everything into a unified uh, view, and that is what will help. And that's what I think, uh, you know, by Oracle Cloud is a superb application yeah. giving all those things. Mm -hmm. But not everyone uses the same systems of record, right? So the systems of records can be different. Uh, multiple applications, and whether it can be cloud or on-premise or everything. But for an employee, it doesn't matter. How do I get a unified view of my us? That is what uh, I think, right. that is something as an employee, if so I look at that. I'm translating, right? Better ways of integrating multiple sources, which maybe not only be Oracle. Because yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because different sources to get one unified employee experience. Yes. Let's do a quick lightning round. I mean, obviously, COVID has changed, pandemic has changed, best practice, we like this. Do you think the change is permanent? Yes or no? Just one letter answer. Right? It's one question answer. Do you think the change is permanent or uh, it's going to roll back to old best I, I think hybrid's here to stay. Okay. I think the borderless environment is here to stay. So permanent, yes. Uh, I think so. I Marcus, mean, yes, no? Permanent and accelerating. Permanent and accelerating. Chris, yes, no? It's going to keep evolving. It's yeah. going to keep yeah. changing. It always keeps changing. Yes it or will. no? Yes or no? Is this so permanent or? So it's not permanent. Not permanent. It's always changing. Oh, good. Excellent. Because <laughs> it's changing. Cut. Nothing's permanent. Good. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Three. Yes. I think no. it's permanent. Like she said, it will accelerate faster change. Yeah. But I think uh, the hybrid uh, remote workforce and their experiences will, you know, will be completely different. Right. And it's permanent. Let's do an exercise of putting three things in the box. We're not going on a remote island, not a problem, right? Yeah. But three, the top three factors that have changed the pandemic for, for McDermott. And then I'm going to ask you, do you leave the three things in the box or you take one out and put another one in so you can think about, have to pay attention to what he's saying? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think we talked about it hybrid, mm -hmm. right? Borderless. Hybrid. And yes. no time boundaries. Which is, which is your, your work and your personal yeah. work and your professional 24 work. 24 by 7 work. You, you yeah. are juggling it constantly. All right. In Shree's, Shree's box is hybrid. I say like global talent pools, large talent global pools. Talent and the third one was? Uh, third, one, third one was the, um, um, the mixed balance of uh, professional work and personal. Professional work, personal work. It's, it's all connected. You, you know. Marcos, you keep those three in the box. You take one out. What will you put in? Um, I will put a few more in. Yeah. Like, but you can only have three. You can only have three. Yeah, only three in the take, box. Take two out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which ones do you take out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me first explain which one I want to put in, like pay quality. Uh, what I mentioned okay. earlier with people working from everywhere, we need to what? look at, uh, at salaries. Yep. And the second one is skills. Big challenge. Um, like upskilling people remote, one okay. thing. And the second thing is, I don't think every manager that was a good manager pre-COVID is still a good manager past COVID. Okay. With the hybrid workspace, um, they are much more, they have different skills and different, um, different experience that a manager needs. Yep. And I think a lot of managers are able to adapt and are able to be upskilled, but I think there are still a lot of managers around that 
manage the old way and have those old skill sets, and uh, they're maybe not in a position to manage remote teams anymore. Okay. So what are you taking out? Um, I, I keep hybrid in, and the other two go <laughs> the out. Other do you take <laughs> out. Right. Okay. Hybrid, pay equity, and the third one was? Um, skills. 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 Chris. All right, I'm going to keep skills. Okay. <laughs> no surprise. All the HR vendors have been working right. on skills like crazy in the last eight years. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Why is that? We've been making you know decisions on jobs and roles. Yeah. Um, all of us, workers, yeah. managers, leaders, HR, um, every bit of our decisions have been about jobs and roles. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get to a place where we're talking about skills and capabilities. Right. And I think we can make better decisions that way. And I think the tech helps by giving people insights and value, regardless of who you are, worker, HR, manager, leader. Okay. Um, but I think that kind of leads to employee experience, and I think that that is a huge focus, and you do have to define it. But I do think this is about you know making the experience better for people. Skills are in. What else? And people first leadership. I do think yeah. the leadership. management model has to change to one of more of a commitment and collaboration. So I think managers work for the workers in that in that regard. So those are my three. Okay. What did you take out? Uh, um, I think uh, hybrid workforce and digital skills definitely. The third I would um, put is the employee care and well-being. Okay, what are your three? Three? The hybrid workforce. Hybrid workforce? Hybrid, the hybrid. one's been staying. So you, put that, that, right? you put that one back. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. And the, <laughs> no, no, it stayed. It was with Marcus. You didn't take it out. You just yeah. skills because we jumped over you. And, yeah. uh, the digital skills, which we talked about. Yep. Skills. And uh, third is the employee care and well-being. Employee care and well-being. Yeah. I think there will be a lot of uh, you know, initiatives and attention to those. So if you get the box back, Shri, are you okay with that? I mean, the answer, uh, three is less to put in it. Of course, of course. It's a hard exercise. <laughs> but hopefully it was a fun, entertaining exercise for you. Hybrid, about your own hybrid thing, right? borderless. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think what you brought up with skills, employee leadership, the leadership model has to change. Well-being is, uh, yeah. is very important. Right. Yeah. Perfect. We have about nine minutes left. I want to open it up to the audience for any questions if you have them. We have a fabulous mic runner who has to get more steps in, so make her run across the room. <laughs> Anybody has questions? Otherwise, we'll, we'll ask these guys questions. Anybody? Wow, should I crowd? No, there we go. Please. Hi, my name is Arati. Uh, my question is... Uh, we are from, Arati. We don't know what you're social, but at least we are from. <laughs> uh, I'm, I live in Houston. I work for Infosys. Okay. And uh, I actually was part of McDermott for the implementation. I oh. also worked with Juniper for the implementation. So I, I wanted to uh, share my uh, uh, you know, question here. So it's more regarding knowledge sharing and collaboration. What, what have you seen and what would you like to see in terms of knowledge sharing and collaboration in a hybrid workspace? Hmm. A question for anybody in particular? To the, it's open to the panel. Yeah. All right, quick round so we get more questions in. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Sure. Um, I think it's one of the biggest areas where AI can play a difference, right? And I do think that we've got to figure out how do we capture that knowledge and how do we utilize AI to help, um, you know, think about onboarding, offboarding, things like that. We've got people coming in and out of our workforce all the time. So I do think that there is a um, kind of a, a huge imperative, and I think system, but also systemically, of making sure that we have all the, you know, that we're bringing all the knowledge in and we're keeping it kind of in our systems and using AI so we can do recommendations and guidance to people coming in as, you know, other people go out or off a project team or out of an organization that people can leverage. Too long, Chris. Quick answers. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, the content is all there. It's how people find content. And nobody wanna, or nobody, no employee does click three levels down to find some content piece. Right. So it's similar to AI, it's how to enable quick content search, quick content management. Yeah, yeah it's the same, same thing here. I mean, we, Arthi, we haven't gotten there yet. All the data is there. Mm. Um, we are in the stage <laughs> right now of cleaning up data, data quality. We've built a lake already, so all of that data is now going to the lake and it's connected with the other applications. But I think the next step is knowledge sharing, trying to do AI, and all of those things. You know, That's a very important things. point. So if you don't have a data lake, don't understand the concept, and OHR people are like afraid of technology, often make yourself familiar as your homework. Three. I talked briefly about that, right? Um, what we did during our, the pandemic uh, start 
is precisely this. How do you actually enable the people to collaborate and digitally upskill? And that is where I talked about the Lex platform. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's More questions. I saw another hand go up here. We had one up here. Yeah. All there. Yeah. Whatever. There's not enough steps for a mic runner. It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think I want to add two things to the Christmas wish list. Uh, I was closely working with CHROs. These are the two missing uh, like like to have. One, every organization is doing their reorg, and uh, I know work, Workle made the initial steps of skills-based architecture, mm -hmm. but how can we take it a step further to make it easy to design the workforce architecture for the changing world? Mm -hmm. right? That functionality is uh, maybe coming in, Definitely would like to have it in the list. Uh, the second one is. Uh, oh, one, 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 one question. I forget <laughs> it. I have, I have a petition. So that's a question for Chris, I think. What's happening with skills? So, yeah, one of the things that is kind of eluding most people, right, is getting the, those profiles and keeping them hydrated, right, with skills and how do we inspire people throughout. Um, and what are the different ways that we can kind of hydrate that profile? So we have added capabilities for managers to put things in as well, colleagues to put things in, or vote things up, vote things down, um, and also where people are maybe engaging with um, opportunities or content or you know, in their performance cycles or their check-ins where you can add that as well. Um, one thing I liked about what you said, and I wanna just make sure I'm hearing it right, is you know, how do you take that even maybe a step further Right, and, and so how do we kind of leverage these skills, maybe not even with our internal employees, but you know, how do we continue to develop, understand the skills outside of the organization? Because if we're doing workforce architecture, I guess in how I would define it, that's how do I access talent? And that talent could be machines, that talent could be full-time employees, part-time employees, contingent workers, what not. So how do we develop that work as a marketplace for the external side as well as you architect? And, and I think that's a, a fair point in where I think we should be going kind of so in that next evolution. My quick reality check looking at all the vendors is we've done skills so many times. Yeah. It was always paper-based. It has never worked or spreadsheet-based, whatever. There was never an impact of filling them out pretty much. Now is the first chance to make it all right or wrong. Right. And I think it's the last chance to get it right because if you do digital, it doesn't get better. Right? So it comes back to vendors like Oracle making the skills count for Absolutely. my career progression, for yep. my pay, for my pay, for my um, learning and so on. If people see that skills make a difference, they will put them in. Employees, we're the best. managers. You know, we're, we're so able to do that with the single line of code and a single data model. But I also think we have to start thinking about capabilities. The average shelf life of a skill is about 18 to 24 months, yep. right? So what are kind of those enduring human capabilities? How do we capture that as well? So we know who could be skilled. It, it will all fly important. if the rhythm factor, right? The famous rhythm factor, what is in for me, mm -hmm. will be solved on an individual employee basis, right? Yep. Cool, more questions. And, uh, I, I just want to also jump into this yeah. because skills is very dear to my heart and I had a lot of painful learnings about skills. And if anyone thinks about implementing skills, I just want to give you one advice. Implementing skills is not a technical discussion. You yeah. should not start with, hey, let's look what Oracle has and let's look where we could put our skills library. It is first and foremost, I would say the first two, three months, you don't even look at the system. It's a business discussion. You figure out what are your skills library? Also, how you want to manage skills in the future. There are a lot more skills coming. There's, it's ever evolving. What do you want to do with this? How do you get your job roles, your job families, your, your levels? How do you get all of this aligned? And do all of this on paper before you start looking at the system. Because if you start looking at the system, you, you narrow down your thinking. And you need to have also a future approach to keep all of this uh, manageable. Great advice, Markus. Vielen Dank. Room for one last question. The gentleman here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Mijo. I work here in Las Vegas for a local utility company. Uh, big fan of the skills, leveraging skills. Uh, my question goes back uh, really to what Chris touched on is we struggle with the shelf life of that skill. Uh, you know, granted, somebody can have 20 mm -hmm. skills, right. but they haven't been in that, that, that position for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. and that skill is no longer you know, relevant. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so how do you manage that? And what, you know, what do we do moving forward? What does that look like? 
Yeah, I do think it goes back to capabilities, but I also think it starts to look at the patterns and trends and the data and, you know, what other, if, you know, if we've seen some kind of pattern of people that from these types of jobs or these types of role or this types of work, how do we start to use the recommendation engine, right, to say, here are some potential paths. Um, and so I think we have some parts of that today, but we also have to look at this notion of capabilities um, and how, whether it's curiosity or resourcefulness or adaptive thinker, critical thinking, what those things are that could also show us, these are people that could potentially learn these skills. And then what are our kind of curriculums around that and, and not just content, yep. but also getting work training. And I think that's where opportunity marketplace is a huge mm -hmm. difference maker because you can put the work out there because not all of us get headcount all the time, right? So if you can put the work out there and start to bring visibility to that, people can start opting in, you know, based on their motivators and, and, and interest levels. Address the what's in for me, right? The opportunity yeah, marketplace definitely. and other places where you can say, oh, my skills count, I need to keep them up to date. Exactly. But with that, we're out of time. Every panel stands and falls the quality of a panelist. Me personally think we had a great panel here. I want to thank Sri, I want to thank Marcus, I want to thank Chris, I want to thank Sri for being a great panel. Please join me and give them my hand. <laughs> and with that, have a great Oracle Cloud work. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.